Hello planty people, my name is Grace. Welcome to my channel. I don't really know how to start this off or, or what to do. Um, I figured doing a plant tour would kind of be the best thing to start off a planty channel with, show you my collection. I really just want to make a channel where I can share my love of plants and document my plant growth and my just my plant journey. I have been growing house plants ever since I was about 15. I'm now almost 25. <laughs> I started off very small. I killed a lot of plants <laughs> throughout the years. I was, you know, growing and learning and now here we are, full-blown plant addiction. My cat Cecil has reminded me to introduce him. This is my fully blind cat, Cecil. Didn't you say hi? <gasps> hi! <laughs> He's a very good boy and he never gets into the plants. He never tries to attack them or bite them or play with them. He is just a sweet angel baby, aren't you? Aren't you? Yes. <laughs> I will say though, sometimes he gets a little confused as to where he's walking or when he's playing, if he's playing with one of his toys, he might accidentally knock over a plant or two, but I can forgive that. <laughs> I am forever grateful that he is not a plant murderer. This is our first sunny day in about two weeks, so I figured the plants are happy today. I'm happy to finally see sun. Everyone's in a good mood. I have a cat here on my nose. <laughs> show you all of my collection. Um, I think I have around 111, give or take. I counted the other night, but I'm not, I, I think I lost count a couple times, so <laughs> we'll see. I am just so excited to get into it. I have been wanting to make my channel for, I've been thinking about it for about a couple months now, and I think it's time. So yeah, let's get into the tour. Are you laying in the sun? Oh my goodness. Look at the rainbows on the boy. So handsome. I guess I will start with the shelf that was directly behind me. This is what I call my cube shelf. I'm using a halo light. Like spring and summer, it gets decent light, but fall and winter, it was, it was struggling. <laughs> this is my Begonia Sophia. I just got it. Uh, as a two leaf cutting. This was the original leaf. The other fell off. I'm waiting for this one to fall off. I really want it to. It's not It's not cute. And the new leaves are so pretty. So I'm tired of looking at the old leaf, but uh, I got this as a two leaf cutting in like October, I think. Um, it has a little growth there. Down at the base, some new growth right there. Jade Satin Syndapsis Propagation. This is the newest leaf potted it up December 22nd. It's just in this bag. I'm honestly a little afraid <laughs> to see if it has roots. Uh, this is from the same cutting. Like these two were attached. I separated them and this one is not doing good at all. I really don't think that there's any roots in that. It, it does feel kind of stuck. I, I, I don't know. This one is doing so much better, thankfully. I find syndapsis so incredibly hard to propagate. I, I just, I don't have good luck propagating them, but I have tremendous luck growing them. And here is my, I believe it's pronounced Lano Cartier Road Syngonium. The burgundy backs. This is the Syngonium of, of my dreams. I wish, I, I wish that I could get the blue sheen to come up on camera. Let me try, let me try the sunlight. Oh, it's so stunning. It's almost, it honestly almost reminds me of an ethereum leaf. Oh my god. <laughs> this one's my favorite. But anyways, this is the newest leaf that I put out. Got a little boo ghost friend in there. This is my currently struggling milk confetti syngonium. I found that when you water these at night, um, that you shouldn't. <laughs> the leaves, like, they intake too much water or something. And you can, they, they literally turn see-through. You can see through them. I actually should probably put this in the window. I can actually insert a clip from a few days ago. It was the day, the morning after I watered it. This it looks so much better. And like, once I put it in sun and it starts to dry out, 
it'll completely look normal again. This has happened like two times now where it gets watered at night and I found out that you shouldn't do that with, <laughs> with milk confetti apparently. This is my philodendron white princess. Let me pull it out. There we go. Now you can see her. I just love the pink striping. Oh, I just love this plant. I think that it's so cute. It has pushed out kind of like a sad looking winter growth right there and right there. Spring and summer it does so much better. But like I said, we have been living in eternal darkness, so can't be mad. <laughs> Not mad. I, I, I understand. <laughs> I get it. This is my variegated umbrella tree. I feel like it's just blending in with all the other ones. <laughs> Oh my god, this pot is so heavy. <laughs> there we go. I have had this plant. This was one of my OGs when I first started. I have had this plant since I was probably 16, maybe? And you can probably tell just by how small it still is that this plant was one of my my beginner plants. I lost a lot of growth off of this over the years, just learning plants and how to keep them alive, what to do, what not to do. This one has been a trooper. I really love this plant. I think it is honestly, it's such a common plant, but it is just, it's just so cute. It's, it's, I love it. Also, I will say this is only going into my second year of having any plant lights at all. I got my first plant lights December 2022. So for plants like the umbrella tree that I've had for that long and it's still a little, a little small, um, that's why it's because over the years it wasn't exactly getting as much light as it really needed to thrive it would you know stay alive but not thrive and right behind that is the oldest plant that i have my dracaena lemon lime i know a lot of people don't really like dracaena um they find them really hard to grow but honestly out of every single one of my plants this one is probably the easiest it is the most neglect tolerant and it still pushes out beautiful growth. It's actually gotten so heavy that I just had to Velcro tape them together because they were about to fall out of the pot with all of this new top growth that it's given me. But yeah, this one is a trooper once again because it tolerated 15 year old Grace <laughs> giving it not the proper care that it needed. <laughs> yeah, now we're really on to my newer plants. And best believe, I have plenty more to show you. This is my Hoya Obovada Variegated Splash. These two leaves are just splashy. This one is the newest leaf. It was emerging while the plant was trying to reestablish, so not really looking the best. It actually lost a leaf. I'm thinking it might lose this one. It looks a little bit yellow to me, but I don't know. This is my first obovada, and for some reason I just, I feel like the care is a bit different. So this plant shipped to me from Canada. I am in southern Indiana. It probably was a little too chilly that week. It has some weird, like, splotchiness and spottiness on the back of some of the leaves. So it kind of makes me think, like, I hope this doesn't have flat mites, but, like, I need to treat it for it just in case. Either that or it's, it really was just, like, the cold. But it seems to be trying to bounce back with some new growth, so I don't know. We will see. I really, I really want this plant to be pretty. Because in the pictures of when I bought it, it was really pretty. <laughs> My Cupid Peperomia up on a trellis looking lush and adorable crocodile fern putting out some new leaves I got this in the fall last year i got it from lowe's it looked terrible so i'm pretty much just gonna cut off all of the crunchy old growth this one isn't that bad pretty much all the leaves looked like this one just just crunchy crunchy crispy but yeah the new growth looks fantastic so fingers crossed that my high humidity room can make this thing thrive a little better these are the conditions of my room, by the way. Normally the humidity is a little bit higher, but I literally don't have to do anything. I don't even have to run a humidifier. It just is <laughs> this. <laughs> my chameleon ZZ plant. Can't really tell because only the new growth gets the, the chameleon veination. That leaf right there kind of has it. 
um, and then it just fades back to green. This is Syngonium Pink Flecked. I got this off of Facebook Marketplace, actually. It was such a little baby when I got it, and now it already needs to be up potted again. Look at that cute new leaf. It's got, oh my goodness, so many, so many new leaves on it. <laughs> this is a Holia Wilbur Greaves. I'm beginning to kind of question that. It definitely is a different shape from my just regular Carnosa. It is like more of a Wilbur Graves shaped leaf. It just is very, very low variegation. I bought it as these two leaves, a little two leaf cutting, and it has grown all of this so far. I am planning on chopping this and seeing if, cause this is like the most highly variegated leaf or, you know, like highly splashy leaf. It's also the healthiest. It was putting out some pretty wonky shaped leaves. <laughs> I want to see if maybe some higher light in the spring and summer can maybe bring back some variegation or put some variegation in it, I should say, cause it never had it. <laughs> This guy is Hoya Croniana Splash. Not really much to say about this one. My Three Kings Syngonium. I just moved it to a three inch pot, so it's a little angry right now, but it's okay because this was a super wonky shaped leaf anyways. This leaf was on it when I got it. I actually bought this one in the beginning, it was like the first week of October, at a Ren Fair in Ohio. Fun little fact. <laughs> And then this, my pride and joy of a Mykins. It actually looks a little bare right now. I just put it on this trellis a few days ago. I'll insert a picture of what it looked like before. I just had wooden sticks like stuck down in there that it was trellising on and it looked so good on that. But the trellis is wider than the sticks were. So, I mean, it'll, it'll fill out. At least all the leaves have like turned to face forward. Cause when I first put it on the trellis, it looked super wonky. <laughs> just, oh, look at the, Oh my god, look at the perfect leaves, the pride and joy. And lastly on this shelf, my Dorado Dracaena. This guy is also very neglect tolerant, which I, I don't typically do, but sometimes we miss a watering. And he never gets crispy, crispy tips. The only times that the, the leaves go crispy is when they're the, like super old leaves. Down here we have my Syndapsis Exotica. Here's the newest leaf. I got this on my 21st birthday. A Raven ZZ. This one I actually found at Lowe's in the clearance section, so I only got it for like seven bucks or something. Now moving on to the front, we have my Monstera Adansonii, which is not attached to the pole, but one can dream. My other pride and joy, my Philodendron Camposportuanum. This was my first mature leaf mature. <laughs> these are, are not what the mature leaves look like, but compared to these super tiny, look, look how tiny that leaf is. Oh my gosh. This was the first leaf that it put out in my care with lobes on the top. This is my favorite shape. This is the newest leaf, so I'm gonna be really gentle, but this is my favorite shape of Philodendron Campo. This is the top cut. I have the nodes wrapped. My next video is actually going to be chopping this plant up because it is running off the pole. I am just so, <laughs> I'm so ecstatic. Oh my god, I've been waiting <laughs> so many months for this plant to push like more mature, larger, lobed growth. I cannot wait. I really love this plant. I cannot wait to chop it up. <laughs> And then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, this is my my sad philodendron Milana Chrysum. I hate this plant so much. I don't like it. That's all. I had heard so many plant people say how hard this plant was to grow, and I was like, it can't be that bad. This plant has has not put out a single new leaf in my growth. Single new leaf in my care, except for this one. This is the first leaf, and it's still damaged. It didn't develop properly, and it's facing the wrong way, even though the window's this way. I have chopped this plant, I think, three times now. This was my most recent chop. I tried to grow here for some reason. It's not a good grower. <laughs> I don't like Melanocrysum at all. I cannot wait to get rid of this plant. <laughs> 
This is just a random philodendron propagation. This is my Monstera Peru. These are the two newest leaves here. Super big and shiny. Adansonii propagation from my boyfriend. And this is my Begonia Maculata. It was a cutting of these two leaves. And these are the two that grew in perlite while it was rooting. And now it has a little baby new growth right here. This is Hoya Elliptica. Hoya Crassi Petiolata. This new leaf is a little weird. I think I need to treat these guys for flat mites. Begonia Black Magic. Some propagations. This is Peperomia Red Ripple. It's actually, I guess that's a bloom. Is this called an inflow? I, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's my Red Ripple. This is my beautiful Begonia Fetter. Um, this was actually my first Begonia. And as you will soon see, I, I really like Begonia now. <laughs> This is Pariso Verde Philodendron that has reverted with the cold winter. But it's okay, because I can chop it all up, propagate it, and hopefully get some of that variegation back. There in the back we have a yucca that was gifted to me. My Baltic Blue Pothos. The light is in the way. <laughs> this is the very first fenestrated leaf that I have ever grown. Aside from Adam so the eye, but <laughs> this was the second one that it popped out. I am so ecstatic. This has, I think, three pole, three pole extensions on it, and it's finally fenestrating. So I'm gonna let it grow. I'll probably put one more on top, let it grow a bit, and then chop it, get rid of all the bottom cuttings, and then only grow the fenestrated ones. We have another Raven ZZ pushing out some cutie new growth. Peace Lily Domino that just has the most insane textured leaves. I am obsessed with this plant. It's the only Peace Lily that I've ever not had any trouble growing. Other Peace Lilies I've had like crisp up on me. This one is just a, a dream plant. Then right above this we have a Hartley Philodendron. A second Hartley Philodendron that is going absolutely wild. <laughs> I've never taken any cuttings off of this one. I macrameed the hanger myself. Over here is my very long Maranta. Behind it are my, my pots of shame. <laughs> These are winterizing, I would say. I only grow my oxalis during the spring and summer, and the fall dies off, and then I just leave it like that over winter, repot it, and then by spring, it's all nice and pretty again. I don't remember what this Dracaena is called like emerald jewel or something or am I completely making that up? This little guy does not get a ton of sun down here but he is still thriving. And over on this side we have Cebu Blue Pothos, Marble Queen Pothos. That's its newest leaf, so cute, so pretty. This is my first ever orchid and it is still blooming for now, which is so beautiful. This is Hoya Chelsea, Hoya Matilde, Another Dracaena. I actually, I actually don't like this one. I don't think it's very cute. Oh yeah, Crinkle 8. I made this chalice myself, actually. Cute little arch. Look at that big old, excuse me. Look at that big old vine. And then this is the jade that I take cuttings from to propagate, so it looks a little wonky. And normally my Neon Robusta Syngonium is sitting here, but it is just really struggling to get enough light. It is so stretched, so thank god we finally have sun. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it on the couch for like a week, which I think we're only getting sun for a day and then it's gonna go cloudy again, because of course it is. So <laughs> hopefully this poor guy makes it through the rest of winter. <laughs> I should probably just go ahead and move to my bedroom. This is my- ignore my clean laundry. <laughs> This is my philodendron lemon lime. I am obsessed with this bushy growth. All it has is this halo light in my dark little room and it is just, oh, I love the, the color of the cutie new leaves. Like a, yeah, like a lemon color. <laughs> this plant really lives up to its name with lemon lime because the new growth is so yellow and orangey and then it fades to green. Oh, I love this plant so much. This one, I have no idea what it is. I bought it as Philodendron Cordatum. It, however, is not that. <laughs> I think it might just be a Monstera Deliciosa. I 
and then just a green ZZ. Actually, I think I'll do these first. This is my terribly sad looking rubber plant. That's pretty much it. This is a pot of Creeping Jenny that I took from the flower bed outside. It looks fantastic in the spring and summer is all I will say. It does not like winter indoors. Hoya Crimson Queen Dracaena Limelight looking spectacular in that sunshine. Oh my. <laughs> Very leggy Triscantia Nanook. <laughs> This is typically just called watermelon begonia, but I think it has like a more specific name, so I'll put that on the screen. Syndapsis trubii moonlight, big bushy peperomia, my albosyngonium, beautiful variegation. These Sally Green leaves is actually a separate cutting of just a reverted one, so this plant here has pushed nothing but variegated leaves, which is fantastic. <laughs> This is my Maria Syngonium. I absolutely love this plant. I had no idea how beautiful it would be in person. It is just so chocolatey. It reminds me of like, like cherry cola color. It's, it's just absolutely beautiful. This plant was actually given to me free. The woman that I got it from gave me a cutting because she thought that she killed the cutting. <laughs> Um, but it turns out that it was alive. Okay, and now on to my plant shelf. This is my big boy philodendron Brazil. This is the string of hearts that I take all my cuttings from. Hoya linear is growing like a weed. This is Peperomia red logs. Hoya rotundiflora. Um, his name is Larry for obvious reasons. I'll try to get you in here. This is my Hoya Crimson Queen. In the very back we have a jade plant. Hoya Caudata Sumatra. And down there, I don't know if you can see, uh, that is Hoya Curtisii. And this fantastically gorgeous plant is my variegated goldfish plant. Puts out just the cutest, cutest little leaves. I cannot wait for it to bloom. Just like trailing over the back of the shelf there. Variegated string of pearls. And this is just Hoya Carnosa, I think. This came from my boyfriend's sister. She took a cutting of her grandparents' plant from the 1970s. So yeah, I just thought that was cool. Hoya Compacta Variegata. And beside that is Hoya Kumingiana, which you can't really even see. Uh, Hoya Ring San, my paper spine cactus, trailing jade, I think. I, I, it looks like a trailing jade to me. Hoya Callistophylla with a baby leaf. A lizard, lizard queen pothos cutting. I put quotations because I'm not sure if that actually exists. I think it is a real cultivar. I'm not, sh I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> that's that's what people are saying it is though. On to the second shelf, my Hoya polynera, which is growing like a freaking weed. Holy crap! I'll pull it out. Actually, I have to pull these out first. This is Hoya Wyattii tricolor, neon pothos with a little bit of a sport variegation there. There we go. I grew this from those three little cuttings, little two leaf cuttings, and all of that <laughs> has exploded. I honestly don't know how to pronounce these, so I just call them my rainbow cactuses. I think it's like Gymnoclesium. Absolutely in love with these guys. They are so cute. The sun is shining. Oh, everything looks so pretty. We yeah, have variegated heart leaf philodendron. Really just waiting on this to push new growth because I can't wait to see. The leaves have more than like the absolute faintest variegation ever. <laughs> really excited for this to grow. I, I hope it does something soon. Syndapsis pictus. Two more of those lizard queen cuttings. To me, these two, I mean, they're from the same plant. Whoops but these two leaves just look like global green to me like this one is very different looking but they're they're all from the same plant it's so crazy so i don't know this one's gonna be interesting to watch grow this is looking really bad 
Reina Verde? Rana? Reina Verde? It's way more pale than I would prefer it to be. But honestly, I, I don't know why I water it plenty. And the lights are definitely not that harsh, so... I don't know. It just needs to get its act together, I guess. <laughs> this is Begonia Zumba. Absolutely stunning, almost metallic looking leaves. And I was sold this one as Begonia Eyelash. Look at that. Oh, look at that leaf. Oh my goodness. It was a lot more green when I got it. Under my grow lights, it's gotten a lot darker, which I actually adore. I love. Like, just look at that leaf. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is such a stunning begonia. I don't exactly know what it is, but oh my god, I'm so glad I bought it. <laughs> the backs of the leaves are also very cool looking. This one is my biggest begonia. This is begonia firework. Actually, this one has a pretty cute story. When I bought it, it was a two leaf cutting and the leaves were completely flopped over and almost melted. And the woman said, I promise it just didn't get watered last night and it will be fine. So I was like, okay. She was telling me he just looks a little angry right now. And as she was saying that, she was writing out the name tags and accidentally wrote Begonia Angry. <laughs> so so this one, this one was just Begonia Angry for so long. Um, and then finally he just decided I'm not gonna be angry anymore. Just absolutely full of massive leaves, constantly pushing out new leaves all the time. Just a beautiful, gorgeous begonia. I, I can, I will never, I will never get over the bubbliness and the minty color. Such a gorgeous textured begonia. Begonia firework, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, she is that begonia. Like, are you, are you kidding me? It's like a bouquet of flowers. Oh my god. This is just Hoya Carnosa. Puts out some quite splashy leaves every once in a while. This one in the back. It's unfortunately in the back. <laughs> it's the most splashy leaf. And lastly for the middle shelf, my Thanksgiving cactus, which for the first time in the past probably eight months, it's actually not blooming. <laughs> it does have quite a few buds on it right now, so it will be soon. But this plant has been such a, a persistent bloomer that for about eight months it had blooms on it. Like eight months straight. It's, it's insane. Honestly, I don't know if I should just chalk it up to the purple lights. Because I think that the purple lights are, are better for blooms. Um, or if it's like my Super Thrive or my fertilizer. I don't know. But this plant loves to bloom. <laughs> And down on the floor, we have, I think I finally ID'd this as Alocasia Tyrian? Ty Tyrian? I don't remember. Um, this I have had for many, many years, and it still only ever puts out three leaves. <laughs> and then I have two Alocasia polys down there. My string of turtles. Hoya Lacunosa Royal Flush. I actually have it on the bottom shelf because I want to get more of that gorgeous red sun dressing and the purple lights. <laughs> I had to get my linearis out of the way. My purple lights aren't quite enough to get the sun dressing like the, the bright 20 watt lights are. I actually have two 20 watt lights up under there. I don't know if you can see that. So we got 40 watts kicking down here. So I use it for my succulents and my little cactus there. Propagations. Um, all of my propagations are plants that I already have like potted. So nothing new down here. That's pretty much it. The bottom shelf is the least exciting. I mean, okay, there we go. That's much better. Um, anyways, yeah, that concludes my plant shelf. I just, I, I got off the couch and, of course, because why not? This plant is already angry enough. Did you really have to do that too? Okay. 
so that concludes my plant tour and I guess I have some laundry to go do now. If you enjoyed watching, I would love it and appreciate it so very much if you could like the video and subscribe for more planty content. I plan on posting about every week, hopefully. <laughs> I do travel a lot, so we'll see. I'll try to film a backlog that I can post while I'm gone. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I know that I certainly did. I always love getting to talk all things plants all the time. <laughs> so I really just want to have a space that I can do that and share my love and knowledge with other people. It's actually quite silly. I've been putting off making the channel and making videos about my plants because I've been a little hard on myself about how my plants look. And I was actually considering like, oh, maybe I should wait until the spring to start making videos because right now they're all like, struggling with winter growth and then I kind of realized like I want my channel to be very realistic. I don't want every plant to look perfect or be growing perfectly because that's not realistic. <laughs> I don't only want to show my plants that are growing fantastically right now and then push the uglier ones off to the side. Um, I, I just I want to be very realistic with this channel and so I realized, you know what? I don't really care what they look like because they are plants at the end of the day. Nature's gonna do its thing and I can only do so much to control that. Um, and I, I just, I don't wanna set like super ridiculously high expectations for myself and end up not having fun with the channel if I feel stressed out, if my plants start, like if one of them starts dying or something. I just, I wanna be so upfront and so realistic and not have crazy high expectations for myself to always have perfect pristine looking plants because that's 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 instagram stuff real life doesn't always look like instagram plants i'll just say that <laughs> so yeah that's that's pretty much it i just i just wanted to to say that i'm i'm gonna try to be a very realistic plant channel <laughs> i don't know how to sign off i don't know what to say <laughs> Cecil, <laughs> Cecil was crying. He wanted to say bye. Oh, what is so sweet, Bob? Say bye. Say bye. Look, can you say bye? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Oh, he waved. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's it. I hope to see you next time. I hope you have a lovely day and I hope that the sun shines for you soon if it isn't already. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!